<laughs> so being that married to a preacher, how do yeah. you prepare for yeah. a sex scene? You know what's interesting about him? Is like, I'll call him and I'll be like, okay, honey, I'm getting ready to do this sex scene. And he'll be like, okay, well, just make it look real because you really want the audience to root for you. You want them wow. to care about the relationship mm. and that's what's going to drive the movie <laughs> like, real, like, oh, you know, really? through. So he's like, so just, you Get know. Get into it. Go, you know, I'm like, Are okay, well, what do you think? Crazy. Greetings. I'm G. Craig Lewis of EX Ministries, and we are here with another episode of The Exposition. This is season two. You can get all of season one, all of the episodes. It's 10 episodes, actually, for season one. You can get those on our uh, YouTube channel, EX Ministries. Um, you know where it is because you're here now. And so uh, we're here with episode, uh, a new episode of uh, The Exposition and we're going to be talking today, well, I'm talking with, of course, uh, Jay Bryan of Jay Bryan fame. What? He's a EX Ministries. <laughs> and then uh, Carmina Barnett, uh, who is a famous radio person. Her voice is known all over this world. <laughs> and so we are here with, uh, uh, talking about hurting people that hurt people. We're going to talk about this today because this is kind of an epidemic that's going on in the body of Christ. And a lot of times I don't, I don't even think it's intentional. I just think it's misinformation. And I think people need to be better informed when they stand up before others. And so we're going to be dealing with this today. What you got for us, Carmina? Carmina gives us our questions and kind of directs the conversation so that me and Jay, me and Jay will get go on a tangent and just be preaching <laughs> and so we have to have somebody here to just kind of uh handle us so, so go basically ahead. I ask the questions and y'all minister no, so we just saw the clip there and we saw the actress <laughs> making good mm -hmm. okay so we do know that she is a <clears throat> pastor's wife and we know that she does sex scenes in some of the movies that she's a part of so my question starting things off is is it a sin for an actor to engage in stage sex? Or is that still considered fornication or even adultery? So, so let's, uh, let's be responsible here and let's, let's define fornication. Let's define adultery. Now, fornication is sex before marriage, right? And adultery is sex outside of marriage. So a married person, married, not married. Outside of a marriage. Right, of, of a marriage, right. And a married person can't, cannot commit fornica fornication, right? So we clear on that. And a single person cannot commit adultery. So we're clear on that, right? So well, let, let's read the Bible. The Bible says it like this. It says, you are doing the, well, the, let me go to a scripture so I can expound a little bit more on this, right? Sure. John 8 and 41 says, you are doing the works of your own father. Now, this is Jesus talking, I, I believe, to the Pharisees. Um, and he's separating between, doing the separation between God, the father, who is our father. And he's calling Satan, the father of people who misconstrued God's word or, or misleads people um, as it relates to God's way, a righteous way, right? So you are doing the works of your own father, right? They said to him, we are not illegitimate children and born out of fornication. So they're making a difference of how we are to, you know, attribute to the concept or the idea of fornication and adultery. So if we don't have an example being God, our father, as, as Christian, as believers, he, he's, a, he's a father that stayed, right? Um, the idea that the church and being the, the bride and Jesus being the groom, there's a marriage there that will never separate. So there is no fornication to be had or that we can that we can define because we are children of that father, which is God who birthed all of this or who created all of this. Right. Um, so we have one father, even God. So it, it just clear it pulls off the scripture by saying we have one God. We have one father. So. Is it, is it still fornication? Is it still adultery for us to engage? We're going to get into that a little bit later, but we wanted to define those two first. Yeah, and the, the most important thing that a lot of people like to do in the church is they like to make fornication and adultery uh, each one right. synonymous with the other. Right. Like it's the exact same thing, and it's clear in the Bible. The Bible does not use them in, interchangeably. It actually uses fornication, and, and in, in the case you're talking about, if it's using it as spiritual fornication, it's basically saying that you weren't, you weren't married right. to anyone before. Exactly. And that, that's how you ended up committing it, because fornication is unmarried uh, sex between unmarried people. And so uh, that's, that has to be abundantly clear, because we don't want to, you know, if you try to make them synonymous, then y y y people get confused when it comes to the passage that tells us, 
uh, uh, what they call the um, uh, 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 grounds for divorce. Gotcha. And that's 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 where it gets confusing because yeah. biblical grounds for divorce says uh, Jesus said in Matthew that it is fornication. He said save fornication, mm -hmm. but. In the proper context, we understand so that fornication is not adultery, so it couldn't be sex between the two married people. Right. It had to be something prior before they got married, right. which would be fornication. It's right. talking about virginity. If, if a, yeah, virginity. If a mm. person was defiled before marriage, Amen. It, if they were given grounds for divorce after they showed the sheet. So this is important, and I know we're going way off of, off your question, but <laughs> some of these things need to be dealt with because a lot of people shy away from these topics. Right. They don't want to offend the divorce. They don't want to offend those. And, you know, people, when they're tired of somebody, I'm tired of him doing this, and I'm tired of him cheating, I'm tired of him looking at other women, so I'm going to divorce him because I have grounds. They always say that. I have grounds for divorce. <laughs> That's crazy. Well, no, right? you don't because you're married. You, you know, you, had no, you ain't been a virgin since you was 12. So you 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 can't you can't use that passage, and so <laughs> so you know. But people try to they try to do that. So we want to bring clarity to this so people can get a good understanding of the difference between the two and understand that even fornication and adultery, both of them are born in the heart of a person. Right. Right. So we're not necessarily just talking about the act. We're talking about what led to the act. What's in your heart that caused the act. So if that's happening in our heart, then our heart is the one causing the action, right? So whether it's staged or not, staged or not, the intent of the heart is still there to do right. it, which makes it real. Two humans cannot engage in sexual relations that aren't real. I, I mean, no, that sense. is the most insane. Okay, so y'all are doing it, but right. it ain't real. Right. That wasn't a real kiss. It was a <laughs> stage kiss. Yeah, that's what they're right. saying. Y'all yeah. was all over each other, right. but it wasn't real. Right. I mean, you know, I felt nothing. It wasn't real. Well, you, did you turn your nerves off? I mean, yeah. I well, mean, I don't understand. I mean, but she, she said her husband told her to make it look real. So that 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 doesn't make sense even the more. So it's you. The 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 argument is it's not real, but. We're going to make it look real. So how do you make it look real without it becoming real? So at some point, it has to become real. I have to turn off that I'm actually married. I have to turn off that my, my, my significant other or my, my, my either, and in my case, my wife is going to view Please this. Say wife and husband, don't say significant other. I know, that's why 20, I had to clear it up because I was trying not to say, <laughs> speaking as if, like, I didn't want to say husband out of my mouth and pertain to me. <laughs> yeah. I want to be very clear that I have a wife. Yes. Yeah. All right, cool, cool, yeah, so so, right there, she, she, she put the camera on, a turn right, the camera yeah. on. No, 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 no. no, no. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? So, like, if, if, if I'm in the field of acting and I step outside of the bounds, because there is a bounds, there is limitations. We're going to talk about that. Uh, as far as being Christians, my wife has to view me simulating or making it as real as possible with another woman. How do you convince somebody that that I'm doing it? How do you convince somebody? How do you, how, how do, you do that? How do you separate yeah. the two? And, and, and <clears throat> first Corinthians seven and one explains it really well. It says mm -hmm. now concerning the things whereof ye wrote unto me, it is good. So basically it's writing on the writing, writing to Paul and saying, OK, where are our boundaries? Right. Like, do we, can, can we touch each other? Well, what do we do before marriage? Should we get a good feel? Should we know what we're getting into? Like most folks say, I need right. to know, know what I'm getting, what into. I'm getting into before <laughs> right. I get into it. Right. And, but that's your problem. You already know what you're what getting you get into because too many folks done got into it. Preach. So first Corinthians it. seven and one says <clears throat> now concerning the things wherefore ye wrote unto me, it is good for a man not, not. to touch a woman. So Paul is putting the boundary at touch. Right. You know, I mean, you're not supposed to even kiss before the, the preacher says you may now kiss. Right. I mean, what is the kiss if it was before you may now kiss? Yeah. I mean, you know, just, you know, talk about it. So he's saying, don't touch a woman. He said, but to avoid what? Which word do you use? Fornication. fornication. So to avoid fornication, let every man have his own wife, own wife. and let every woman have her own husband. So yes. he's describing it. So whether you on stage acting it or whatever, I'm pretty sure it feels the same whether it's acting or not acting. I mean, because you always act in human. I mean, right? if you're going to make it look real. <laughs> Okay, let's move on. <laughs> well, I want to ask this question because I know even for myself, I grew up in church 
And we looked up to our pastor and our pastor's wife. You know, we had such a high level of respect for yeah. them. So shouldn't the case be that they are like striving to live free from sin instead of kind of promoting sinfulness and creating sinful imagery? I mean. Yeah, I mean, but, but the Bible said that this will happen in the last days. So departing from the faith and giving heed to seducing spirit, spirits. These are the spirits that seduce people into perversion and, and they're winning the hearts of a lot of people and many of our leaders. So they, they lead many astray for this very reason. So 1 Timothy 4 and 1 states, Now the Spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter time some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. So it's, the, the Bible already foretold this, that, that we would experience these times where our leaders, many of our leaders, would be given to or heed to seducing spirits. So no wonder, unfortunately, this is uh, the claim of a pastor's or a, a minister or preacher's wife. Um, that, that he has made her comfortable in these actions, right? And it's a couple of things that she stated in the interview where she spoke about he would be the one to call her and say, hey, make it look real, right? And then D.O. Hughley. Yeah, yeah. I mean, the secular folks was like... He was sitting there with his mouth open like, I cannot believe yeah. that another man would give his wife permission to make a sexual act look as real as possible. Like, how would you do that? So if we have the world again. So these are doctrines of devils. Yeah. This can't be likened to the word of God because it, it doesn't follow his order or the, or, or the, the righteousness that he is. Right. Mm. So uh, where where are we at when, it, when we now we have preachers, wives or, or ministers, how whatever he calls the gentleman calls itself. A voice for, I guess, Christianity in the sense where it's been made OK. She's she's like given a platform to, to lead in the sense. Yeah. And, and, you know, you can always tell when somebody's hurting, you know, and that's why we're very careful. Even when people walk in church, dress seductively, showing stuff, you know, bosom mm -hmm. out, butt out, whatever they got out, uh, everything out. They come in church like that. You know, our first reaction, of course, is to, you know, throw something over them, yeah. you know, choir robe or something. Yeah. Uh, but then again, you have to realize also that that person, there's a reason they need that kind of attention. That's a that's somebody who's hurting for some kind of reason, uh -huh. you know, something in them is hurting yeah. uh, and it's it's working with working its way out. The hurt that is in you will always come out in your life choices. Mm -hmm. And a pastor or minister will do things uh, to people because they themselves are hurting in that area. So when you even have pastors that, you know, abuse people or do different things, use, misuse people, that's all because that's some hurt in them that's working their way out. So yeah. we must heal from our past that hurts us so that we don't cause or harm to other be others because when we are making our way to cover our hurt or to satisfy uh, ourselves so that we won't hurt, we are in turn hurting someone else. And that's the issue. So, you know, Megan Good, you know, she dresses provocatively already. She was already, you know, people were already saying that about as a pastor's wife, why are you looking like that? But in the interview, she said, he knows who I was before he married me. Mm -hmm. You know, and he don't have a problem with who <clears throat> who I am. Mm -hmm. And I'm uh, and he's not trying to change me is what she said. Change her for marriage. Yeah. She specifically said, she said for marriage. He's not trying to change me for marriage. And I'm like, well, didn't your last name change? I mean, why do we change the last name? We change the last name because the woman takes on the identity of the man. Mm -hmm. And we're not even talking about ministry wise. We're just talking about. You know, you taking on his ident identity as him being the head right. of the home. Mm -hmm. But then now we add ministry to it. You definitely have to take on the identity of a shepherd's wife because now you are leading people and you're responsible for people. So mm -hmm. if you're becoming a stumbling block to people, then you're responsible for the blood that is on, you know, y'all's hands because you are given or portraying the wrong imagery in front of them. Right. So we got to heal from those past uh, to ensure that we don't keep hurting people for our own benefit. And Hebrews 12 and 15 says, looking diligently, let any man fail of the grace of God, lest any root of bitterness springing up trouble you and thereby many be defiled. One thing I want to go back to, Pastor, that you said was the hurt that is in you will always come out in your life choices. I think People really need to pay attention to that because we all got hurt issues. We mm -hmm. all been through something. Everybody dealing with something. Right. So will we go to the extreme and say that's going to disqualify every leader or minister because they went through something? Mm -hmm. and I'm glad you brought that question yeah. up because, again, in the video, she talked about 
um, her experience because the question was posed to her or asked to her. Well, so do you go to do you go to church with with your husband? And she'll say, well, well, no, not all the time, because basically she was insinuating that the judgment from the church people stops her from going to wherever he goes or or attend service services with. Her. So in that, she also explained that she's a very sensitive person, which we understand biblically is already explained that the woman is the weaker vessel. This is why God has you marry a man. Right. Mm -hmm. So if 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 the understanding is that she's dealing with things, hurt or past issues, why are you still allowing her to be subject, subjected to so many things instead of covering her, right? So you'll go out there, you'll preach, you'll minister, you'll do all of these things, and she's being hurt by the church, but she can go and simulate real sex for a paycheck. So God gives us grace where we are. That's, mm -hmm. that's not the question. We understand that God will give us grace where we are, but this is why it's so important for us to be under good leadership. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And this is from the church to the home. Being a husband, we have to be good leaders to learn to balance the guidelines so that we not take on so that we don't take on more than our spirit man is capable of handling. Because everything is a cinch inch by inch, right? So when you got married to a man of God, I would assume that that would change. So, okay, as an actress or as an actor, now that we've come together and we've 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 said these vows before God. Things automatically change without us talking about it. They think more things will change as we have that conversation, right? Mm -hmm. But the thing that should change is number one, another man shouldn't be able to see you naked, mm -hmm. huh. right? Because your body belongs to me, my body belongs to you, correct? Number two, hot, <laughs> right, <laughs> right? Number two, and not to put it in any particular chronological order or anything like that, the idea is that. There are things that change automatically once you say I do and you take those vows before God. So, yeah, again, God will give us grace where we are. We have to learn. But that leadership, if it's not good leadership, will always uh, lead you astray. And if you have a voice, God forbid, then you'll lead many astray, which possibly she's doing already as 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 in her position that she's in. Well, that's what her views say on, on our Instagram. But the Bible says also that God deals with us as sons. Um, so... This means that he teaches us what we need when we need it. You know, uh, my sons, uh, I got one son who's, you know, about to be 13 years old, you know, and uh, his responsibility is to click the little thing. Uh, what do you call it? The little take thing yeah. to, to show us what take we're on here at the exposition. Right. Right. But he's not old enough to handle what his older brother is handling, Landon, who's actually doing the directing and the production of it. Right. So I have to handle one differently than I handle the other. But he's still capable mm -hmm. of doing the tape mark, right. right? So that's how God deals with us. There are things we are still capable of, even though we may be struggling with certain things mm -hmm. or dealing with things. There are things we're capable of. Mm -hmm. And then as we mature, we're capable of taking on a greater responsibility. But God has to be the judge of that. So he deals with us like sons. Amen. And he teaches us what we need. When it's time to fly, he teaches us how to fly, mm -hmm. but not until we learn to stand, walk, and run first. Everything has a season. But here's the problem. <laughs> when we have those issues, those, that, those hurts, we want to skip over seasons to find validation. So we want to jump from, you know, from crawling to flying. Yeah. And we miss walking and running. Mm -hmm. And that makes puts us in a very dangerous position because that puts us in a position to where we may gain an audience that we're not ready to be responsible for yeah. and we'll do things in front of this audience that will cause many of them to fall and we become a stumbling block to them you know uh first uh timothy 3 and 6 says when it's talking about becoming a leader or the qualifications for a leader the first thing it says is not a novice, novice. Right. Lest being lifted up with pride, he fall into the condemnation of the devil. So yeah. this tells us that there is a link between the novice and pride. Yeah. Because the novice doesn't want to take the opinions of people to say he's not ready. So he lifts himself up in pride to try to be ready. Yeah, yeah. And that's how a lot of people get, uh, get hurt. So we're all hurting, Carmen. Like you said, we all, you know, we all dealing with something. Yeah. But we have to let God rightly divide that and say, OK, you're ready for this, but you may not be ready for that. And that's where good leadership, like you said, actually comes into play. Amen. Right. It's the exposition. This is episode three. And we're talking about hurting people hurt people. We're going to take a real quick break, but make sure you visit us online at exministries.com. 
One out of three children in America live in homes without their biological father. It's just the way the devil wants it. God's desire is for every home to be under the authority of a man. Marriage and family is the cornerstone of God's creation plan. We failed these kids because we couldn't stay married. When parents break up a marriage, they force the children to seek an alternative identity. That kid is mad, and he ain't mad at the parents. He's mad at God. So he's going to find another belief system because you messed Christianity up because you couldn't forgive. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go find me a God that's mad. Music artists, actors, etc., create the subcultural movement that attracts other fatherless kids seeking identity and social relevance. I wasn't going to talk about this in this, but this is an opportunity for them to really mess things up. CERN is using antimatter to attract beings from other dimensions. Right now, there are people walking around possessed by demons from what they have done. I'm doing a message like this because it's important to understand the role that a man plays even with CERN. It's time for men to stand up and be strong. Turn the hearts of the fathers back to the children. Great thing about him is like he wasn't looking to change me in marriage. Like right. he knows who I was before marriage. And so right. there is growth that happens together individually and collectively. But it wasn't like, okay, so now you're married. You can't do this anymore. Right. I don't want you to do that. Blah, blah, blah. So we're talking about hurting people hurt people. We're going to continue this conversation. And I have another question for you. I want to know where do we draw the line? You know, where do we just say, okay, this is enough when it comes to these occupations that may require different things. You know, you have some artists and Christians that believe that recording sinful music is just work. Or even when they have to use foul language or perform sexual acts, they say, well, it's, it's just work. It's just for the job. Mm -hmm. Where do we draw the line with that? I, see, I, I think the biggest issue is, you know, why would a Christian want to put themselves in a profession where they can control their own behavior, right, as pertaining to being a Christian? Okay. Why would we put ourselves in that position, right? Um, so if the job won't let you stay saved, then find another job, <laughs> right? So I'm, I'm in, the, I'm in the, the retail world, and we do finance, right? So I've had, I've had conversations with Christians on the job where they would say, well, you know, the Bible say, oh, no, you know, oh, no man. Right. So here's the thing. In the world of finance, you, you, you finance something, you, you create payments based on what you can afford for whatever your reason it is for that, that scenario, that situation. However, if you can afford two thousand, but you approve for ten thousand, it would just be irresponsibility if you went on ahead and financed ten thousand dollars worth of, worth of things. So as a Christian, I don't sit down with somebody and lend them money to make a purchase. And then my conscience is it, it isn't involved in them making the, a sound decision for themselves. Mm -hmm. You understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So that idea, if you're a Christian, then you operate in your Christian values mm -hmm. all the time. But you can't but, justify that and say, you know, you looking at their faith level. You can't fix it. That oh, way. oh, gosh. <laughs> no, oh. there is a spiritual side and then there's a natural side. Right. Well, ask so, your wallet. Yo, let your wallet. If I, if I put my hand in my pocket and then lint comes out. <laughs> I can't afford ten thousand dollars, Carmine. If you give it to me and I got to pay it back to you, okay. yeah. you understand what I'm saying? Yeah. So it, you just apply it from that from that standpoint. Yeah, yeah. And like you said, where do we draw the line? We don't have to draw the line. The Bible Preach. already drew the line. Uh, this is why the no rules, no religion thing that is being promoted uh, is so dangerous. The relationship with God is based on His rules, mm -hmm. and so God's rules say that you know you don't help people. You don't hurt people to help them. Right. Okay. That's God's rule. I mean, we, if, 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 if he's in the hurting business, then he's not in the helping business. Right. You can't be in both businesses because there's a conflict of interest. Mm -hmm. So we got to adhere 
to, you know, God's rules at all costs. And this isn't being religious to where we look like something we aren't, but it's being righteous where we're trying to be something we all should be. Right. And I think that's the misunderstanding people have with it. They say, well, I don't want to, you know, uh, be religious where I'm, you know, faking like I'm something that I'm not. Well, we're all something that we're trying to be. And that is be righteous and do the right thing according to the word. The word is our marker. So those are our rules that we gotta we have to buy by them. Just like you just said, there, there are rules to, you know, even if the money is available, that don't mean you be irresponsible. Right. Well, the, the Bible says the same thing about the grace of God. It's, it tells us not to frustrate it just because it's available. Paul said, you know, um, is this give me an occasion to sin right. just because grace is there? He right. said, God forbid. You know, how can, and then he flipped it and said, how can you do that if you aren't who you used to be? And so that's, you know, that's what we need to make sure we're understanding. Uh, the Bible has already drawn the line. John 15 and 10 says, if you keep my commandments, you'll abide in my love, even as I have kept my father's commandments. So God has commandments, which another word for commandment could be rules. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. Another word for commandment could be rules. Well, yes. he said, keep my rules mm -hmm. or my commandments. And you'll abide in my love. And, and just real quick too. And then the Bible says abstain from the appearance of evil. First Thessalonians 5 and 22, right? So why would you <laughs> want a job where your job is to be evil? Or to promote? Or to promote evil. Like evilosity. evilosity. Yeah, I'm a Christian, but you know, on the side, I do a little bit of cussing. A little bit of fornication. And a little bit of, you know, that God understands. Just, I sin for a living. They like, have shirts I, that say that. Have you seen that? I love God, but I cuss a little. Oh, wow. Okay. So something you said, <laughs> Pastor, was trying to look like something we aren't. So let's think about that. So before I should try to show myself to others or try to be before others, shouldn't I make sure that certain things in my life are okay first before I try to get before the people? I mean, how else can you show it, right? So... How can, how can you show others if you have no proof of it yourself? Okay. Right. So if, if 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 I'm looking to get married and I go and I talk to pastor, hey, pastor, I, I, I want to get married. Well, let's do something real. Hey, hey, pastor, I'm young in marriage. I've been knowing pastor for quite some time. I've called him before. Hey, this is what's going on. And because of his experience, because of the things he's gone through and excelled in. Right. Put his foot in it. It may have gotten burned. So now he can tell me, don't put your foot there yeah. <laughs> because you might get burned. You understand what I'm saying? Because of that, I'm, I'm able to make a different decision if I choose to listen to him, right? Or, or being a good example always strengthens the argument. So if I'm in a situation where I have, uh, you know, if somebody comes to me and say, hey, man, I, I want to, because I, I was married at 21, right? So if somebody come to me and say, hey, man, I'm thinking about getting married at 21, what you think? Well, for me, it was, it was great because I'm the type of guy that at that time in my life, I would have did any and everything in terms of just being all over the place. Marriage provided discipline for me. Marriage gave me a focus. Marriage slowed me down. Marriage showed me the difference between reality and, and, and superfluity. The things that I wanted to do, the places I wanted to go versus the things that I had to maintain and manage at this present time. Mm -hmm. So how can you be a good example? If you have no example, then how can you really sell it? Mm -hmm. So for me to go to Pastor G and ask him, hey man, I'm, I'm dealing with this, whatever it may be, mm -hmm. I, and let's get the, the other side of it. There's been areas where he'd be like, you know what? I got somebody you can talk to about that. Mm -hmm. So it's not all about necessarily being or having the answer right then and there. It's also being able to guide you or help you walk it out a little bit more mm -hmm. too. So, And all that comes with experience. Yes. Uh, but, you know, back to your original question, you know, shouldn't we be okay? There's certain issues that have to be resolved before we can be in position to leave. Okay. But, but Pastor, if you say that, then what happens in the situations where I got mad? And I had to go start a ministry because I didn't like what they was doing over there. I didn't resolve it. I just went forth. And that's the body of Christ now, unfortunately. unfortunately yeah. uh, the majority of the churches are people that got upset, had splits from denominations, had church hurt, had relationship hurt. The majority of the single, uh, well, mostly all of them are single female pastors are pastoring because they don't have a good man or a strong man. Mm -hmm. You have a strong man, you ain't going to be pastoring. Uh, he ain't going to be the sound man. Right. And so, you know, these are all people that are, you know, uh, uh, in position and doing things, not necessarily because they were called and not even necessarily because they're uh, qualified. 
it's because they were hurt in an area and they're using it for something. And, and, and this is why certain issues have to be resolved. So before right. you stand up before anyone and try to lead anyone, your self-esteem has to be, uh, that that issue has to be resolved. Yeah. So your self-worth, that's the main issue, self-worth, yeah. because that's where the devil gets us, because that's what got him, mm -hmm. self-worth, not being happy. That's what got Eve in the beginning, self-worth, not being happy with who I am or not being content with who I am. If we struggle with insecurity and low self-esteem, we will use the platform that belongs to God to enhance ourselves. So that's the issue. So when we struggle with self-worth, we can't be before people or have an audience right. because we're going to use that audience for validation to boost our resolve. Mm -hmm. And that's where it becomes dangerous. That's why you got churches, a lot of churches where the leaders are tyrants or the leaders are loose and lax or they're just pastoring you know, to have something, to have some people, to have a ministry, all right. the things they couldn't do in corporate America. Right. You know, I, I don't, you know, I don't have a degree. I don't have a this. I, you know, I couldn't keep a steady job. So let me pastor. Right. That way I can let the people cater to me and mm -hmm. things can be a certain way, you know, based on how I'm feeling. This all came from Isaiah 14 and 11, where the devil did the exact, I mean, Lucifer did the exact right. same thing in heaven. Yeah. He, he did not, he was not content with his job. He wasn't content with his music, his vials and his pipes or whatever. He said, I want to be like the most high, mm -hmm. meaning I want to be lifted up high. And he also got checked in uh, uh, Ezekiel 28 and 18. And here's what he said because of his, <clears throat> his you know, uh, trafficking himself or selling himself or promoting himself. It says, thou hast defiled thy sanctuaries by the multitude of thine iniquities, by the iniquity or the sin of thy traffic, which is promotion. Mm -hmm. Therefore, will I bring forth a fire from the midst of thee. So this whole promoting thing, you know, if you're going to promote yourself, then you're going after the world. And if the world likes you, then something is wrong with you because to promote yourself and maintain your integrity, according to the word, is impossible, impossible. Uh, because people are going to change you so that you can suit them mm -hmm. and be, you know, uh, where you want to be. But what right. makes us get to that point where we want to be famous so much that we just lose our love and passion for seeing people, people change? What makes us get to that point? Uh, I, I, let's, well, let's question it. Was, was it real passion in the first place? Mm. Right. So can, can a passion to help people really change or was it never a real passion for God's people in the first place? So I think that's a question we can pose to a lot of people who who decide to go about something and they're calling their passion or did they just pinpoint something that they can gain in that. And then the moment they can't gain anything from it, then it's no longer a passion anymore, right? So I think a lot of these folks, um, they really wanted the world all along, right? It, it's a niche. Church became a market. And it, that was ushered in through the, 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 the gospel prosperity or the, or the false gospel prosperity. Once they made it about money, it pretty much opened the door, the floodgates for people to come in and start making merchant of people of God's people. I mean, that, that's a that's an issue um, that, that still happens a little below the radar, but because it's done its damage, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. And so that's why we have these discussions. So we can constantly put in the forefront how we can handle these things. But if we look at first John 2 and 19, it says they went out from us, but they were not of us. For if they had been of us, they would not doubt. Uh, they would no doubt have continued with us. But they went out that they might be made manifest that they were not not all of us, not at all of us. Right. So the idea that these people would, would if, if we belong to God, how can we go? How, how, why would he allow that to happen? No, nah, that's not how it works. If you're walking side by side with a person and you decide with your brain and the, the operation of your body to walk off to a, a, a separate place, then that's the decision that you made. But you can't do that over here and then say, hey, everybody, this is God over here. Mm -hmm. It wasn't God the way I started in it to begin with. Mm -hmm. But then the way we're able to see that is the Bible says we know the people by the fruit. So a lot of times when we deal with these these uh, these topics, we look at those people and we look at what they're what they're bearing versus the, the, the righteous way. And a lot of times they all deal with the same issues, broken homes, uh, children who don't like them. Right. Uh, divorce. I mean, you, we can go down a list of things that happen. So uh, the, the, the thing is, don't call it passion. I think that's just a, a buzzword to draw people, to make them believe that that's what you're supposed to be doing. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and uh, is the passion to help people greater uh, than your passion to help yourself? That's the real huh. question. Yeah. You know, I mean, we're all in Christ, so our passion should be to get where we need to be. 
Right. And, you know, we can, if, if we have zeal for the nations, we need to have zeal for us and our issues first. <laughs> Talk about so it. So that yeah. we don't take our issues to the nations. Yeah. You know, people like to use the idea that if they blow up, they can help more people. And that's the most ridiculous thing. And like you said, it came from the prosperity thing, but I think it started a, a much younger than that because mm -hmm. I used to, you know, I know a lot of famous people. I know a lot of people in the industry and different things. But when we were younger, you know, we were all musicians. We were all playing in church at a very young age. We were all talented, you know, good musicians, whatever. And, you know, I, I was... Uh, I was pretty good at what I did in different things and I would play music and I would get an applause from the crowd but then when I got home I would get beaten from my daddy when I did something wrong my mama would make me clean up and if I didn't do this I didn't do that so there was a balance there hmm. but then I would watch a lot of my friends who didn't have that structure maybe in their home that's good they would get home and they would be applauded because of their talent and their ability and what they were able to do without any discipline hmm. and so that ended up growing into them seeking to go to the church to be validated when I could get my validation from home, oh. from my father, from my mother. Talk and as I grew up, I was still talented and still able to do things, but I wasn't doing it to get the people's attention or to make people like me because I felt like I already had that support system in my home. Mm -hmm. And I think that's where a lot of this comes from, especially actors and actresses. You know, most of them, well, all of them come from broken homes. Yeah. You know, even back in the day, in the, back in the days of, black and white, you know, back, <laughs> you know, I used to think everything was black and white back then. But back in the days of black and white, uh, I asked my mom one time, they had color back then? You know, I thought things were in black and white. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> but back in the days of that, you know, they would find these actors and actresses in soda shops. They were homeless. Yeah. They had run away from home. They would find them on the streets. They would find them, you know, just whatever, because they left home looking for that validation. Yeah. And so now they want to stamp Christian on it because, you know, they, they have some kind of Christian conviction, but they really want to do it for the world and get that validation. So, that you know, they spray Christ on like cologne, but right. they still go and do what they want to do. And that's the problem. That's the problem we have. That's why they even choose these paths. They're not ready for it or they're not even uh, in position to call themselves a Christian, but they want to be validated by the people and they want to be validated by Christ. They don't go to hell if they heard about hell. You right. know what I'm saying? So you mentioned before we were talking about how the pastors, or I mentioned how the pastors get, get, just get mad and they'd run off and start a new church. Well, now you don't even have to do that. You can just log on. And right. start your social media ministry. Right. But mm -hmm. shouldn't I take a long, hard look at myself before I do that, before I'm infecting people with my issues? Yeah, no, you, you're absolutely right. Exactly. I mean, and, and, and I believe that's why we titled, it, titled the, this, this episode Hurting People Hurt People. Because, you know, people have these convictions, but they really get it from Big Mama's House. That's, that's what we say here at ABC, Big Mama's House. So, <laughs> so you got to explain, though. What is Big so Mama's So Big Mama's House, house is... It's, it's, it's big mama, right? So in a, in a lot of homes, it's grandma, but also symbolic to just a domineering woman who didn't Nature. have a man, right, um, to, to balance her out. It's an imbalance is what we're speaking to, right? Okay. Big mama house, man, listen, when I, you, I mean, you got it all. So you would get, you would get granddaddy who spent the money, right? Or he'll take you <laughs> and get your popsicle, whatever the case may be, but then you better pick up the wrapper, right? Or, hey, you had sugar an hour ago, Right, right now, it's time to get you a glass of water. There's a balance there. Mm -hmm. But yeah, a big mama who just want to come in, baby, cuddle you a little bit, and then when grandfather turn around, what's she sliding you, a licorice or something, right? <laughs> so it's that imbalance that people get from, from, from big mama's house. It, it's, a, it's an unstable home um, that doesn't have sound doctrine. So they, they're not receiving it from a strong figure or a strong author, authoritative figure, mm -hmm. right? So this, this imbalance will always manifest later on when the test and the trial of this life comes because this is truly building your house on sand. Mm -hmm. So if you don't have balance, everybody understands that to build anything, you have to have what? A solid foundation. foundation first. So if you don't have the solid foundation first, whatever you build on top of it, at some point is gonna cave in. Mm -hmm. So if I'm starting my career from this, this, this sand, found, sanded found foundation, and I get to a point now where, it, keeping the context of what we were talking about with the young lady, Megan, who, who did the interview, now you're marrying a guy who, who obviously has some issues as well. And not to, not to bash him or anything like that, but for you to give your wife the green light to simulate sex with another man, 
there's some insecurities there. There's some issues there. There's a there's a weak foundation there. I'm but, I'm, I'm mad for him. But isn't he saying it as I'm supporting her? I'm really encouraging oh, her to be better. <laughs> I'm asking. I'm asking the question. You see how you give me the air quotes, I'm right? Right. The I'm no. supposed to ask the question. And and so it's a, it's that's the same argument as you know <laughs> you know didn't, they they die for us so, so we can vote. No, right. So you have to still <laughs> have it. responsibility in the decision making. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So I'm supporting you by saying, listen, you, you're telling the world on a, a nationally syndicated radio show and on YouTube, the World Wide Web, right? Mm -hmm. You're telling the world that you have sensitivity issues, mm -hmm. but your husband is allowing you to simulate real sex on a screen in front of more people. If that doesn't speak to an issue bigger than what's really being talked about, then I don't know what would be. You understand what I'm saying? So the, the it's, this is this is this that's the spirit of pimp. <laughs> that's the the spirit of pimp. Yeah, it's the spirit of pimp. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And yeah. if you think about it in Hollywood, it, it, a, a lot of these situations, they what they produce is these weird relationships and marriages. Wait, you understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So now, especially with method actors or actresses, right? With they now we have to. I have to engage in a real intercourse with you in order for me to even get comfortable enough to do this on screen. So am I gonna go and ask my wife, hey honey, uh, can I go have intercourse with another woman? It's for a role though, I'm just preparing for a role. This, it, it just doesn't make say, any sense. Don't come to the set today. <laughs> right, 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 right. <laughs> right, so it, it just doesn't make sense. Um, again, it's, it's building on sand, man. It's, it's going to fall, it's going to sink, uh, if that's gonna be the perspective. Yeah, I mean, it's, and it's filthy. You know, I mean, some stuff we don't even have to try to be politically correct with. That's just filthy. Talk about it's it. It's filthy for a man to even watch his wife engage in that. Forget the preacher. Male. Talk about it. I mean, male, the, as a generic as the symbol on the restroom door. Yeah. That dude with no eyes, he, you just know he's male. Mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's filthy for that male to sit back and watch his wife do that let alone a man who is supposed to be some kind of man of God to condone it to where it is even shocking to the secular activists that are interviewing him. Yeah. Uh, he should feel real shame. Um, I mean, it's just bad all the way around. But um, we're going to bring this to the close, bring this to a close. Uh, and I'm going to close it out with this. Um, but uh, I know y'all learned something today. This was some real good perspective on Amen. this. Uh, Christianity is the religion of worshiping Christ as Lord. So let's get that straight. Mm -hmm. Making Christ Lord makes us Christian. That is our religion. In order to make him Lord, we must accept him and live for him his way according to his commandments or rules and regulations that are written where? In the Bible, of course. Mm -hmm. There's no way to accept him any other way other than the way the Bible specifies. People want to throw away religion and claim relationship, but to claim Christ without his commandments is like saying, I am Christian, but I do not desire to suffer as one. <laughs> Talk about it. In Christianity, we cannot promote sin, endorse sin, or practice sin. When we do, we become stumbling blocks for others instead of helping, uh, instead of helpers to them. We are supposed to show the way for those that do not know the way. This is not about telling God, I'm sorry for sinning, but continuing in it. It's about repenting, which means turning from sin. Sin create, creates the issues that cause people to hurt. The hurting people in turn hurt others because they themselves are hurting. You can't sin without hurting someone else. If we do not teach people how to stop hurting, then we cannot stop hurting others. And if the job of the pastor is to help people find answers for their hurt, shouldn't it be required of him to find the answers first for himself? Uh, 1 John 3 and 6 says, no one who abides in him, God, keeps on sinning. No one keeps on sinning, uh, no one who keeps on sinning has either seen him or known him. Little children, let no one deceive you. Whoever practices righteousness is righteous. As he is righteous, whoever makes a practice of sinning is of the devil. For the devil has been sinning from the beginning. The reason the son of God appeared was to destroy the works of the devil. The devil. Yeah. 
No one born of God makes a practice of sinning, for God's seed abides in him. He cannot keep on sinning because he has been born of God. By this it is evident who are the children of God and who are the children of the devil. Whoever does not practice righteousness is not of God, nor is the one who does not love his brother. 